Like, why are you making me refinance another hundred thousand dollars or seventy thousand dollars for money that I never took out or borrowed? Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Krizia Ann, and I am a new graduate nurse from West Coast University. If you guys have never been here before, I basically make videos about my experience from the school, my current experience as a new graduate, going over my new job as a hospice registered nurse, and basically mostly talking about tackling my loans, what I'm gonna do to pay off my loans. And for today's video, I have gotten a lot of requests from people so if you guys don't know you guys can DM me on my Instagram at and underscore underscore if you guys have any questions that you may have you know um, and a lot of the questions that people would ask me is how did you pay for student loans how much did it cost you know how much money can I expect like I don't have any money like I don't know how I'm gonna do it I don't know how I'm gonna pay off my loans like I'm so scared like I feel like a majority of it is the fact that West Coast is so expensive and people that's basically stopping people from going to West Coast and a lot of people have already been waiting on a wait list and it's just taking long so ugh, there's in that and so they just like want to get started right away in West Coast but money is an issue so to reduce that anxiety and to kind of give you guys a video talking about my loans how I was able to afford or basically pay for my tuition for West Coast and then talk about the different types of loans that I got and then going into how much I'm paying monthly for a, my private loans and how much my interest is and I basically refinancing it so that's like the second half of the loans because I know that were anxious of the unknown and so hopefully this video would kind of give you an idea of what to expect when you take out loans um you know kind of like what you're supposed to do for that and before you even go to school or like in any any type of university or college you know they have you go meeting a financial advisor and you don't know anything so this video is just basically going to be a generalized idea to give you of what you can expect of how much money you'll get where you can apply for the, the student loans in order to pay for school so i went directly on to so sorry if i'm looking down because i have like all my notes on my computer but before we go into it i'm just going to tell you guys how much it costs so if you go directly onto west coast's website they do show you the tuition amount so the tuition amount for a bachelor of science in nursing in california is going to cost 145,312 dollars and this is the cost for everything including the books your supplies and all that stuff so it's actually a little less than this if you can decide to take out the portion of the total book shipping the cost of books and supplies out of the tuition cost you have to uh, tell the advisor that you want to take that portion out because you can save money from just buying books from other students um and buying used books and basically what that is is the school gives you a credit card or gives you money that you can use for the bookstore to buy the books so you can take that off because you could save money anyways that's just like a whole different thing but that's just a general cost of how much it'll cost if you went to west coast without any transfer credits basically starting new doing all your ge's there doing your chemistry taking anatomy taking microbiology so that's the total cost of the program starting from the beginning the cost of the tuition will be less if you take prerequisites at a community college which is what i did anyways let's get back to the main 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 point so that's the general cost of west coast for me when i went into it my cost for each tuition or basically every time i had to pay the school was 30 around 32 thousand dollars for the tuition cost and when you're going to west coast or when you're going to any college or university you actually don't have to come up with this hundred forty thousand dollars and pay them right away like hey i'm gonna get my degree here's my hundred forty thousand dollars no that's not how it works every time you start a new term like when i was at uci or a new semester at a college or anything that's when you pay for the tuition 
And so with West Coast, how they have you do it is they have you pay every two semesters or every four semesters. And then they call, call it like repackaging. So before I could even start West Coast, I had to actually come up with the money and in order for them to enroll me in the school. And so for my first tuition for the first four semesters, it was around $32,000. And then this is the fun part where I'm going to go into detail of exactly how it's how I was able to apply for the loans another thing too a misconception that a lot of like someone message messaged me about that if you fail or drop out you're gonna have to om everything even if you didn't finish the program that is not true you only pay back what you actually went to school for so if you ended up dropping out a certain amount a, like dropping out after two terms you only pay back the tuition for those two terms not for the four terms that you gave the money for the school will work with you to give the money back to the you know wherever the money came from okay now let's get back into what the actual video is about so if you have never went to college before if you don't have the money and you don't know where to start and where to look for the California or wherever whichever West Coast you're gonna go to your state basically or the government is oh my god i can't even say it basically you should be able to get something called federal loans so there's two type of loans that i'm going to be going over because these are the two type of loans that i got when i went to west coast and so the first one's going to be the federal loans and then the second one's going to be the private loan and the reason for that is because there's only a certain amount of money that i could get for federal loans and everyone only gets a certain amount of money for federal loans um and so i had to go to the private lender in order to get the rest of it so just for the sake of this video the cost of my tuition for the four terms or how much i had to come up with the tuition that i had to pay for was thirty two thousand dollars okay so with the federal loan federal loan again is basically money from the government and how you could apply to see if you're eligible to receive to receive federal loans is by filling out FAFSA which stands for the free application for federal student aid basically it's just a very long application that asks you a lot of questions that you have no idea what it's talking about but it basically asks you to fill out your parents information from their w-2 form from the tax form your information how much money you make how many dependents there are in the family your household income how much your parents make and then it sees what you're eligible for and it also determines which kind of bracket you fall under so when it comes to federal loans you'll fall under two brackets you'll either be a dependent or you're going to be an independent that'll determine how much money you get and how much you're eligible for the loans the second type of loan that i received was the private loans which is basically from a private lender but i'm going to be going over the federal loan first so after you apply for your app for the fafsa it determines whether or not you're eligible and it determines whether or not you're a dependent or an independent and the school will get that information because you have to put a little code and the school's able to access that so when you go into your financial aid advisor make sure that you complete your fafsa and that the school has it so that they can see how much you're eligible for because if you don't fill out before the appointment you're basically going to go to the appointment and not get the information that you need because every person every person is different so what i'm saying may not be the exact thing for you so the federal loans falls under into the two different brackets so if we look at this image right here i don't know where i'm gonna put it but if you look at this image it basically the difference between what determines if you're dependent or independent is this list so if you're independent, this is what qualifies you as an independent. And this is what I fell under because I was 24. So I was 24. So you have to be 24 years old, married, been a graduate, professional student, a veteran, a member of the armed forces, an orphan, ward of the court. You have legal dependents, like you have kids. You're an emancipated minor, someone who's homeless or at risk of becoming homeless. Or if you were a dependent whose parents did not qualify for a plus loan, that determines you to be an independent. And dependent is basically the what isn't on the independent list. And it's basically someone who's under 24 years old, who still lives with their parents and is going to school. And you're basically just dependent on your parents. You make no money. You have no source of income. And that's what determines you as a dependent. And so this is the how much you will expect or how much you can borrow 
from the federal loans depending on if you're a dependent and independent and depending on what year you are for the school and the school will determine that because when i went to west coast and i'm applying to places it'll be like oh what nursing school year are you and half the time i'm like i have no idea if i'm on my first second third sophomore junior whatever senior i don't know what level it is because west coast's program is just i don't know how they break it down in terms of what year of nursing student you are if that makes sense so let's look at this picture so the dependent on the first year you'll get 5500 second year is a dependent you can get up to 6500 third year and beyond you can get up to 7500 and as an independent we can see that you actually get a lot more so for first year 9500 second year undergrad 10500 and then third year 12500 and these are actually the numbers that were on the FAFSA website or federal student <clears throat> federal aid website so this is the current numbers of how much you will be able to get approved for and the other thing too is that there's different types of federal loans so there's an unsubsidized and subsidized loans and basically this is just a type of loan that determines how your interest is going to be paid because obviously when it comes to loans in order for the people who are lending you money in order for them to make money is the interest so the longer that you don't pay for your loans or like a credit card it builds interest and you basically end up paying more than what you actually took out so with a subsidized loan a subsidized loan means that the government will pay for your interest while you're in school while unsubsidized means that the interest will accrue until you graduate and that's basically the difference and so it's better to have it subsidized but you'll only get a cap amount of subsidized for each one of these amount that you can get so let's go back to it so you see that the independent actually has a lot more money versus the dependent um, because as a dependent you're dependent on your parents and that's basically what that is and so if you're going to be paying, if the tuition was $32,000 and you're covered for $55,000, you get up to, you have to come up with what, another tw around $27,000 <clears> to pay for your tuition. So you're like, where the hell am I going to get $27,000? I didn't have $27,000. My parents didn't have $27,000. The only way to get $27,000 is if I gambled or if I freaking, what, I don't know how else do you get money nowadays like become a drug dealer i don't know but <laughs> um i didn't know where i was gonna get twenty seven thousand dollars from and if you're a dependent there's something called a parent plus loan meaning that your parents can actually apply for a loan for you to pay for school so that's why the dependent you actually get less because you can have your parents take out a federal loan which i'd say is pretty good because their interest rates are not that high compared to getting a private loan but anyways if you're dependent if you want to come up with the twenty seven thousand dollars your parents can apply for a parent plus loan and get approved for that that one there is no usually no cap it basically the school determines how much you're, you should be getting and it's determined by the cost of what the school says this it's gonna cost basically so that is what you can do as a dependent so if you're not 24 and you live with your parents you have no income and you're relying on your parents basically your parents can apply for that plus parent plus loan to help you pay for your education now if you do not if if you do not if your parents don't get approved for a parent plus loan then you can qualify as an independent and you'll get more money now as an independent so if my tuition was thirty two thousand dollars and i was a second year undergrad because i already finished my prerequisites i was considered a second year undergrad at that time and i was approved for ten thousand five hundred dollars in federal student loans so subtract thirty two thousand minus ten thousand five hundred we're at about twenty one thousand dollars so i had to come up with twenty one thousand dollars and since i was an independent and i can't do a parent plus loan i had to go to a private lender so west coast gave me a link that gave me a list of like all these private lenders student loan lenders that i could apply to and see where i'll get approved and so i actually ended up going with college avenue servicing college yeah college avenue which is the company that i went with honestly i don't know why i decided to go with this company it was just 
I think the easiest one for me to apply for, but I don't know. I think I was trying to do it without a co-signer, but I ended up having to have a co-signer. So I just went with College Avenue Servicing and I can't tell you why I did it. I wish I knew what I was doing back then, but I didn't. So I'm sorry, I can't give you information on which company is the best one, but definitely apply to different ones to see the different interest rates, to see your options. Cause I know some people may not, like when I applied for the student loan, I had to have a cosigner. So I had to ask my sister, I had to ask my dad to be a cosigner in order for me to get approved for these private loans because I was not making any money. But if you do work full time, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that you'll get approved for a private loan by yourself without needing a cosigner. But since I was a full-time student, I didn't have an income. It required me to have a cosigner. So when I applied for my private loans, I was basically applying around $20,000, $21,000 every time for the private loan because I was getting $10,000 from my um, federal loans. The other option is if your parents make a lot of money and they're very supportive, they could also help you pay for your tuition monthly. So West Coast does have an option to do like a pay monthly. So if your parents have money, I had a friend whose parents had money to pay for it. They were just basically paying monthly for their tuition and not have any loans. So that is another option too. Or another option is if you don't want to take out $20,000 and say, I only want to take out $15,000 from a private lender. I'll come up with the $5,000 myself. You can tell that to the school and the school would basically put you in like a, refi a financing payment plan that you have to co pay like for those within those four terms. So there's different options that you can do. It's up to you. If you have money saved, that is an option too. Because I know people have messaged me before saying they have X amount of money and then what do they do from there and then the question comes how do you pay it back do you have to pay these loans during school when i'm not working and i want to focus on west coast and focus on school the answer is no you do not have to pay it back while you are in school for federal loans what as a student every time you go to school or you're you know they get a notification that oh hey this this person is a student we have to put their payments in deferment so when your your payments are in deferment while you're in school so you don't have to pay for your loans back yet for federal loans until six months after you graduate because once you graduate you have a six month grace period so you have six months to find a job in order to start paying back your loans and again there's different option plans different ways of how you want to pay back your loans but that's i'll go into that a little bit later and so the thing is with this also is that even if you're not paying your loans while you're in school, you're actually still accruing interest. So the interest rate that they give you before you sign off the loans and accept it, they're going to give you an interest rate. That's basically the interest rate per year. Um, and so your loans are still going to in your your loans are still going to accrue that interest while you're in school. So some people like to just pay a little bit during that time that way. I don't know if it makes a big difference no matter what you're still gonna pay a certain amount and same thing with your private loans when I applied for my private loans there was an option to say how do I want to pay do I want to pay the lowest amount which is $25 a month or do I want to do 200 400 500 600 dollars a month to pay for my loans so that is also determined by you and so I was paying $25 as low as $25 a month while the interest was accruing for private loans it doesn't go into deferment. You, you have an option of how you want to pay and how much you want to pay while you're in school. And again, while you're not paying for your loans or whether you're paying for your loans, there's something called interest that will accrue. So I feel like that is something that a lot of people get afraid of because at the end, you're paying like X amount more than what you actually took out. So that is the thing when it comes to interest. So the longer that you don't pay for your loans, the more money that you owe because you're building interest over time. And that's how the banks and that's how the private lenders and that's how the government gets more money from you is from something called interest. Now, the biggest thing is I feel like, a oh my God, my leg is getting numb. Ooh. Let me just move my leg a little bit Ugh, okay so when i applied for my loans for my private loans my interest rate was like at 11 percent, and that is freaking high and i didn't refinance it until i actually got a job and so i waited 
and so my interest rate was at 11 percent and at the end total the end total of graduating from a private lender i i took out sixty four thousand dollars but during that time and with my high interest rate i accrued up to ten thousand dollars in interest so that is not good so when i graduated and currently right now i owe seventy five thousand dollars and eight hundred twenty four seventy five thousand eight hundred twenty four dollars and so i decided to refinance that and this was all from the same student loan company i tried to refinance with college avenue and i got back like an email saying oh this is how much money you're gonna refinance which was one hundred thirty five thousand dollars and then over time i was gonna accrue up to two hundred twenty thousand dollars and i was like what the hell I applied for $75,000, not $135,000, so I freaked out and I started looking into other companies. So, I applied to Sofia, SoFi, and then I thought I was approved, and I was like, oh. oh my god, guys, it literally stopped me, and I had 10 minutes left on my video. Holy moly. But, I'm trying to open everything up again. Oh wow, that was frustrating. But anyways my story with sofa i don't even know where it ended but hopefully i can catch on where it ended so this is what happened so they called me and they're like sorry we can't refinance it because it's a career loan and i was like what do you mean it's a career loan like i applied for a student loan and so i look at my documents and then it was like oh it's a career loan so they can't refinance it so make sure that when you sign up for a loan it's for a student loan because it'll make it easier to refinance um or I ended up actually just refinancing back with um, College Avenue. So when I was looking at College Avenue in my application, I was like, why is it coming back to me saying that I, I'm taking out $135,000 when I put $75,000 or the amount that I have? And then it was showing me that, okay, over 10 years, I'm going to be owing freaking $220,000. And I started freaking out. And then when I got that call from SoFi, I was like, fuck, like, how am I going to pay for this? I have $220,000 to pay back. Like, what? Why is it showing $135,000? So I applied again, and then it came back again. It came back $135,000. And I was like, oh, my God, let me go call freaking College Avenue. So I called College Avenue, and I was on the phone. And I was like, hey, you know what? I applied twice, and it keeps showing, like, that I'm trying to refinance $135,000. But I'm, I'm really only trying to finance seventy six thousand dollars because that is how much money i actually took out like why are you making me refinance another hundred thousand dollars or seventy thousand dollars for money that i never took out or borrowed basically and then they're like oh you know what it's actually set up because your school put that's the you know maximum amount you can get because that's how much the tuition was gonna cost or whatever and i was like but why am I going to pay another $70,000 in my refinance? Or why am I trying to refinance $135,000, $70,000 more than what I actually took out? And they're like, okay, let me put you on hold. And then they speak to the manager, blah, blah, blah. They get back on the phone. I say, oh, okay, sorry about that. Um, it should be $75,000 and we'll send you an email with all that information. And then I get the email and I was like, thank God. Because if they were going to make me refinance $135,000, like literally look at what you're signing and look at how much money you're doing because that if i didn't look at that and i was just like sign 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 and doing all this stuff giving them my information i would have refinanced seventy thousand dollars more than what i actually refinance and paying a hundred thousand dollars more over time so look at your stuff look at what you're signing question everything because this is money and this is your life so I was able to refinance $75,000 and $825, $75,824. And so if we look at this picture here, this is basically all the information that you guys can estimate. Well, this is for me, but maybe it'll give you like an idea of what to expect for yours. Um, again, this is with me. With This is me refinancing only my private loans. This doesn't even include my federal loans. So... If we look at the interest rate, so if I decided to go with a five-year route, it would have been with a 4.09% interest rate. Over five years, it would have accrued $15,506, and total payment that I would end up paying over five years would be $83,324. And the monthly payment in order to achieve that would be $1,388. 
So I would have to pay $1,388 a month for five years <clears throat> if I want to pay off the $75,824, including the interest, versus the 15 years of the 5.14% interest rate accruing $33,104 over 15 years and a total payment of $108,928. But the difference in this is that the monthly payment is going to be $605.16 over 15 years. And so I started questioning which one should I choose? I would have chosen the five years because that is what I would have chosen if I wasn't saving up for a wedding. So I would have been paying that much in order to tackle on my loans as quickly as possible because the longer that you don't pay for your loans, the longer that you're going to have, the more money that you have to pay. So I spoke to my financial advi financial advisor, shout out to Mina. She's actually, she was our mortgage lender and she was really cool. She's young and she has experience, a lot of experience with dealing with money and financial stuff. So I reached out to her and I asked her, gave her this exact scenario on which one should I pick? And she said, well, if you're gonna go with a 15 year and pay $605 a month, then what are you saving up that, where's that extra money that's that's gonna go to like where's that extra seven hundred dollars that could have gone to your loans go to and i told her well i'm trying to save up for a wedding so that's why i want to go with the 605 and she's like personally i would choose the 605 dollars <clears throat> or 15 year plan with a 5.14 percent interest because i'm trying to save up for my wedding once i save enough money for my wedding i can start or pay off my wedding i can start putting that money back towards my loans and trying to pay that off as soon as i can and so that is why I decided to go with that route because that is what my current goals are. And my current goal was to decrease my interest rate from 11% to 5%. And that's what happened. And I have my monthly expected payment to start in August of $605. And the reason why I also went with this is because I could pay more than I wanted. But my minimum amount is always going to be $605. If I did the 20 year, it would have been $500 a month for 20 years. But again... The numbers would have changed um but the interest rate was better for me with a 5.14 because also if i put this in automatic payment it actually will decrease my uh interest rate to 0 0.25 0 0.25 percent less so it'll be up to 4.98 percent of the interest rate so it'll still bring my interest rate down um but again this is just more for my private loans this isn't for like this doesn't include my federal loans so that's like a whole nother topic so I actually didn't take out seventy five thousand. I actually took around sixty five thousand, sixty four thousand dollars. But because my interest rate was so high, it accrued up to ten thousand in just two years. So that's a lot. So I had to just do it now because I had to refinance it before it keeps building up that interest. So that is something that someone asked too: is like, when am I going to have to start paying it back? When it comes to your federal loans, until you graduate plus six months, that's your grace period. So I will also make another video talking about my federal loans and that monthly and like different payment plans that I can go with that. But that is what is you're going to expect. So um, and this is what the numbers are for me. It could change for you again. But I hope that this brought out this made you guys less anxious. Hopefully it didn't make you guys more anxious. Um, but at least you get an idea that you're not going to be drowning in debt, you know, because I put my investment, basically I paid and borrowed money in order to make more money because after five years, five, seven years, when I pay off these loans, I will already be making more money because over time in your career in nursing, you know, the more experience you have, you'll get paid more over time. And that's a good thing about nursing too. And the more experience you have, the more money you get paid with even different jobs. So my other plan is too, is that I, I'm going to be planning on getting a second job um like a per diem job just so that i can be able to put money more towards my loans that is a plan like it just honestly depends on what happens in the next couple of months and then we'll see from there of like how i'm gonna tackle my loans and everything but this is just showing that you're not always gonna be drowning in debt i mean you might be for the first five years it depends you know but if you're someone who's able to still live with your parents um you could pay a lot towards your loans there's someone that commented actually on my two videos ago on the one about my debt and she said that she wished she started paying loans as quickly as possible and 
that she actually ended up moving back home from her husband like a wait she ended up she has a husband and she moved back home with her parents in order to get a higher paying job in the area where her parents live and is actually putting down 80 percent of her um paychecks towards her loans to pay it off and she has about fifteen thousand left so it's possible and it's doable and just know that you will be able to pay for it and that you're not going to be like stuck in this whole thing like paying your loans all the time so it's possible again so we're gonna do this together and like seeing all the comments and everyone commenting like thank you guys so much for like all the comments and support and letting me know that like i'm not the only person freaking out about this um i'm basically like the only person talking about actually i'm not the only person talking about it other people talk about it but I feel like it's just the fear that we all have that if we mention this, people are going to judge us. And that's not the case because no matter what, everyone has loans. Everyone has something to pay for, whether it be a car payment, whether it be a mortgage, whether it be credit card loans, anything, you know, like you're going to be paying stuff for the rest of your life. You're going to be paying for rent the rest of your life. If you don't own a home, you're, if you're not paying a mortgage, you're paying rent, you know? So there's just things that you have to sacrifice for the next five years and don't go out and just like spending money because for the first like two like last month or so since i've been getting paid like i've been spending money but i know that i shouldn't but like getting paid what i get paid is actually very gratifying like it makes me happy like i'm making triple the amount that i made before i went to nursing school so it's like if i never went to nursing school i would have been stuck with p getting paid 30 40 a year so like I'm probably still only having forty, thirty thousand dollars towards myself, but you know, once you pay that off, it's like a whole nother world. So I hope this has helped you guys get less anxiety. I hope this has um, you know, kind of been a little reality check for some people or just to realize that like, hey, this is doable. I can go to nursing school for this or I can go to school for this or to some people it's like I don't wanna be in that much debt okay well that's up to you it depends on your investment it depends on your life goals it depends on where do you see yourself in the next 10 years and i didn't see myself sitting at a job getting paid 16 dollars an hour and just like being living paycheck to paycheck and knowing that i wasn't going to be stuck in a job like that for the rest of my life and knowing that when i got into nursing that i have potential for growth i had so many new opportunities open up for me like there's so many things that you could do in nursing and it has changed just like my career goals so i hope you guys found this video helpful thank you guys again for watching don't forget to give my video a thumbs up because it helps me out or subscribe or put on the notifications so you guys can see the next video thank you guys for watching